Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest video recipe. And in this one, I'll be making this amazing beef lasagna. Now there are four stages to go through. Number one is making the pasta. Two, making the pasta sauce. Three, making the meatballs. And four, making the cheese sauce. But there is nothing too difficult at all. And each one of these stages can be used to make lots of other different pasta dishes and various other meals. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And I'd like to thank the Patreon and PayPal supporters for their very kind help. I'll be doing the shout out and name splash a little later in the video. Okay, let's get on with today's recipe. Okay, for convenience for this recipe you can use the store-bought lasagna sheets like these, but it's so much better if you can make your own, which is what I'll be doing for this recipe. I'll quickly go through the process of making your own pasta and I'll post a video shortly after this one going into a lot more detail on how to make your own pasta. And these are the ingredients you'll need. Double zero flour, fine or medium ground semolina flour, salt, eggs and a little water. I'll begin by weighing everything off. Starting with the 300 grams of double zero flour, followed by the 100 grams of the semolina flour. If you can't get either of these two flours, you can get away with using 400 grams of simple plain or all-purpose flour, but it's not as good in taste or texture, but still better than store-bought pasta sheets. Now add the salt and mix. Now the percentage of eggs to flour ratio is 61.5% but I'll go into that in a bit more detail in my pasta video. So when it comes to the eggs you'll need 246 grams for this recipe. And the best way to get the precise weight is to crack as many eggs onto your scale without going over the required weight and make up the shortfall with cold water. Right, now give the eggs and water a good mix until it's nice and runny. Now, to bring the pasta ingredients together, there is no better way than using a food processor. OK, I've added all of the dry ingredients to the processor. Now, while the machine is running, I'll slowly drizzle in the egg mixture. If you don't have a machine, you can, of course, mix it by hand, which I will demonstrate in the upcoming pasta video. But using this processor method, it literally only takes 40 seconds to bring the dough together. And there you go. How quick was that? You do, however, have to hand knead it for a few minutes. In my case, five minutes. So I'll set the timer away and start to fold it just like I was kneading bread for the full five minutes. Just add enough flour to stop the dough from sticking to your hands. Once that's done, remove any excess flour from the bench. And after five minutes kneading, your dough should be silky smooth and supple, just like mine. Before using it, let it rest in a plastic bag and in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. OK, on to stage 2, which is prepping the meat. Place your 5% minced or ground beef into a bowl. 5% just means how much fat's in it, but you can get away with anything up to 15%. Anything above that is a little too greasy. Add all of the other ingredients, including the beaten egg, and start to fold it all together. And the best tool for this job is your hands. And incidentally, this is a fantastic beef burger recipe too. And once thoroughly mixed, divide your meat into four pieces. Now roughly form each piece into a burger shape and store them on an oil tray or plate. Cut 
cover and set them aside for now. Right, on to stage 3, the cheese sauce. And it starts with a basic bechamel sauce. Now add your butter to the pan and melt on a medium heat. And once again, this stage can be used in making lots of other dishes. For example, mac and cheese, cauliflower cheese, fish pies, to name just three. And it's a fantastic recipe to have in your repertoire. Now add your flour and mix. Keep stirring this basic roux mixture for three to four minutes. And that should cook away the floury taste. Now switching to a whisk, start slowly adding the milk to the pan, but continually stirring. It's a litre of milk in this recipe, so I have two 500ml jugs here. Okay, time to add the salt and pepper. I like to use white pepper, but black is okay too. Try not to add too much salt, because the cheese that goes in later will be salty too. Now a little freshly grated nutmeg, which is pretty traditional in a bechamel sauce. Now keep stirring, and as it heats up, it begins to thicken. And once it heats up and thickens, you have your bechamel sauce, or what's also known as a basic white sauce. To turn it into a cheese sauce, simply add your grated cheddar cheese and gently fold it in. And once I add the cheese, you now have a Mornay sauce. Have a quick taste. And that's it. The perfect cheese sauce for making your lasagna. Now on to making the pasta tomato sauce and cooking the meat. Add the olive oil to a large frying pan and on a medium to high heat start to fry off your four meat patties. And in a separate pan, add the olive oil and fry your onions until they're soft and translucent. And after five minutes, turn your meat patties over. Once your onions are soft, Add your two teaspoons of garlic, and I believe that's about four medium-sized cloves. Now add your dried herbs, that's one teaspoon of oregano and one teaspoon of dried basil. And now add your salt and pepper, that's a quarter teaspoon of each. Now give those a good stir. And this is when you start to smell that wonderful Italian sauce aroma. And now add the canned tomatoes. And don't forget to rinse out the cans with a little water. To make a more intense tomato flavour, add about one to two tablespoons of tomato puree or paste. I'm just adding one tablespoon. Now I like to give this a quick blitz with my hand blender. And that's it. Your delicious pasta sauce is made. And by this time your meatballs should be finished cooking. So I'll cut those in half and add those to the sauce too. Right, there's a lot of flavour left in the bottom of that pan, so don't waste it. Deglaze the pan with 250ml of red wine or stock. Right, that'll go into the sauce too. Right, I'll have a quick taste of that. 
and that's beautiful. Now cover the pot and allow it to simmer for 10 minutes on a very low heat. Right, on to making the lasagna sheets. And like I said earlier, you can use the store-bought dried lasagna. Nothing wrong with that, but homemade is so much better. And that's something you need to experience for yourself. So, as you might have guessed, I'll be making my own. And in this quick section, I'll show you how I do that. Start by getting a large pan of water onto boil and a large bowl of cold water alongside. And begin by getting your pasta dough out of the fridge and onto a floured surface. First I'll cut a small piece of the pasta dough I made earlier. Now flour the whole bench. Now form that small piece into a long flat shape. Now with your pasta machine on zero, run it through. And if you don't have a machine, just use a rolling pin. It takes a bit more work, but I have done it many times in the past. Now I'll cut that piece in half and run it through on number three. Now keep doing this in increments of two units until you finally reach number seven and that shall be thin enough for lasagna sheets. Don't forget to keep adding flour or it will stick to itself. Keep going until you have around 15 to 20 sheets. If you end up with too many, don't worry, the excess will freeze. Now on to cooking it, and this couldn't be simpler. Start by adding a good tablespoon of salt into the water. Now carefully place four sheets one at a time into the boiling water. The water will go off the boil, but when it starts to boil again, about two or three minutes, get them out and straight into the cold water and that will stop them cooking anymore. And while the next four are cooking, you can dry the cooked ones off between a couple of dry towels as shown. Once dry, place them on a wire rack until they're all done. And that's it, your lasagna sheets are done. Almost done. All I have to do now is quickly chop up the meatballs. I like to prepare the meat this way, as it takes on all that tomato sauce flavour. Add a little more of that sauce and mash it in with a fork. OK, it's assembly time and everything is laid out and ready to go. But just before you start putting it together, preheat your oven to 170 Celsius, that's 340 Fahrenheit or gas mark 3. And this is the pretty little dish I'll be making the lasagna in. And the dimensions of the dish are on screen. Begin assembly by laying down a thin coat of the tomato sauce. And this is the order of layers that I use. And it goes pasta sheets, tomato sauce, meat, cheese sauce and finish with grated parmesan. So, on goes the pasta sheets. Now a thin coat of tomato sauce. Next, a sparse layer of that gorgeous beef. And on top of the beef, a thin layer of that cheese sauce. Now you don't need a lot of this cheese sauce, as it'll make the centre of the lasagna soggy when cooked. And the final layer is a little finely grated Parmesan cheese. If you can't get parmesan where you live, just use another hard cheese, like a good mature or sharp cheddar. 
Now keep building up the layers in that order until you get to one centimetre or about half an inch from the top of the dish. I think my lasagna ended up with six layers altogether. To finish off the top you need a good coat of the tomato sauce and a little more of the cheese sauce as shown. And it looks like I'll have some left, but it certainly won't be wasted. I'll make up a smaller one and show you it near the end of the video. Now top that off with a good helping of parmesan. Remember this does expand some in the oven so don't go right to the top of your dish or you'll end up with an overflow. To prevent the top from overcooking and drying out cover the dish with foil. This will be removed and the temperature increased for the last 15 minutes in the oven. But I'll show you that when we get to it. Ok get that into your preheated oven. Now just to be on the safe side, place the tray underneath just in case it starts to overflow. Now set your timer for 50 minutes. And at this point I hope you don't mind if I give my two recipe books a bit of a plug. The books have lots of our favourite easy to follow recipes from our work kitchens in them. Both books are available in the website shop along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. And by popular demand the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you directly to the website shop. Ok when there's only 15 minutes left you can carefully remove the foil. And now increase the temperature to 190 Celsius at 375 Fahrenheit or gas mark 5. And that will result in a great texture to the top of your lasagna. When the time's up get it out and onto a wire rack. As you can see there was a little spillage on the bottom tray but not too much. But it always pays to protect your oven. And that looks and smells amazing. Now just let it cool and settle for 15 minutes. And when I come back I'll cut a slice out and have a taste. And this is the smaller one I made with what was left earlier. Now this one will be making its way to my granddaughter Kate's house tonight. Ok here we go. There is a few steps in making this delicious meal but it's totally worth it. It's still a little on the hot side. And if you want to really impress your friends or family this is the one to make. And just look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Time for a little taste. This lasagna would keep about five to six days in the fridge and it freezes very well too. And if you're interested the best way to reheat it is in the microwave. And just as I knew it would be it's incredibly tasty and delicious. And when you work it out it's pretty cheap to make too. My wife and I will get at least three meals each from this one. And this is how we served it to our customers. With chips, stroke fries and a nice plain salad. Definitely a big thumbs up for this one guys. And as promised at the beginning here is the latest list of my Patreon and Paypal supporters. And they are Kevin Pothier, Lewis Russell, Stephen Threlfall, James Roddingray, Laurie Sheehan, James Starkey, David MacDonald, Andrew Nguyen, Lou Garita, John Hughes, Sharon Kirk, Curtis Price, Burry Gowan, Rob Kane, Georgina McDowell, Teresa Ratajsak, Liz Oppenheis, Scoobs, Shane Dillard, Susan Elizabeth Ainsley, Stephen B. Wall, David Maruska, Barbara Jo Wines, Jean-Philippe Siri, and Stuart Graham. And there's also two who wish to remain anonymous. Thanks very much guys. I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch.
So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now. <laughs>